The people on the ground are not receiving any real justice. We just had the, the Eric Garner situation and, and so forth. And then we turn around, we have the exact same situation occur here in Minneapolis. It's, you know, it's, um, it's very tragic. It makes me angry, it makes me upset. Um, I'm even a little agitated at the people that stand around and continue just to videotape it. Okay, it's good to catch the footage, but if you have 20 people standing around, why not do something? Let's all go to jail tonight. But we're going to save someone's life in the process. Definitely from a policy standpoint, there has to be some, some law changes to really hold these um, officers accountable for what's taking place. Um, the thin line that they've been walking and saying that these trainings for the, the um, you know, to to address situations like this is, is just not working. But I do know that um, from the unions to the insurance companies, all these people need to be held accountable that continues to be layers that protect these officers from being held accountable for these murders. These are, are murders that they're doing. They're supposed to be training, mental health counselors and things that should be brought into to deal with these officers, it should be mandatory trainings, and and um, we should even have like a like a um, a group, a task force that goes along, that's on standby when officers are um, called out to go to certain situations and deal with um, things that may be occurring like this to assist them. We're seeing in some um, places where they're they're utilizing the mental health. Uh, community to assist officers when they're going to arrest folks and so forth. I think we have to really get back and look at the models of community policing and, and this is what falls up on the community policing where you bring in social workers, you bring in the mental health community and you create this overall task force to assist the officers when they're going about to arrest folks and, and, and are called out to disputes and things like that. I think we really have to not only look at that and have conversations about that, but begin to implement that and be proactive in other places where this may not necessarily have occurred at this particular time. But I think um, being proactive, we can potentially solve and, and help curve um, from things like this from happening again. I serve the vulnerable population that we work with. In, in general, I'm a certified recovery coach and, and mental health um, adult and youth first age assistant. And I see the symptoms, you know, in particular with this, the population that we work with, you know, um, a lot of with the COVID on top of the Flint water crisis that's still ongoing. You know, we have a health crisis on top of another health crisis that really is challenging the mental state of everyone. We have a community that's um, been traumatized on so many levels. And when we see certain, um, whether it's the COVID or the Flint water crisis or these types of things, um, pandemics taking place, it only adds on to the mental strain that folks are going through. And I'm seeing a lot of relapse. Um, a lot of folks from being isolated that normally go to the face-to-face -face, uh, service meetings um, for counseling, whether it's substance abuse, domestic violence, things like that. People are becoming very agitated. The sun's coming out. We know um, using the summertime, things are more tense when it comes to um, the activity and violence like that in the community. Well, I think we're at a tipping boiling point now. Um, you know, just being isolated so long that we have been on top of um, the, the many layers and different issues of trauma that we have been dealing with that we haven't really had the opportunity to heal from. We are a community that's really suffering. Historically, we're dealing with trauma and, and, and in the current pretense, we're dealing with different layers of trauma that needs to really be addressed. And it's gonna take all hands on deck and it's gonna take a lot of resources and a lot of uh, collaborations on many levels of folks um, working together to solve some of these problems and curb some of this um, violence and things that we're seeing. When you don't get justice in the criminal justice system, when things like this is occurring, you're doing everything that you, you are supposed to do and you continue to end up on the bottom, that does something to you mentally. You know, because you now you don't, that continues to, to, to bridge the gap of distrust with law enforcement and things like that. No one wants to work together, you know, and it just widens that gap. And that's not good for any of us. You're getting ready, I believe, you, you, you're setting the environment for something to explode. 
you know, because people already know the end result of what's going to happen. You're going to get people that maybe go out and march. You're going to do this. People are tired of marching and not getting no results. But marching is good to bring awareness to these um, tragic events and things that's happening, but we done seen it play over and over and over again. So how many marches are we going to do, you know, and still not get the results that we're looking for, still not getting justice?